Good morning my fellow Vault Dwellers and Wasteland Wanderers. Today we're going to take a look at how to acquire the power armor the Fallout community has affectionately nicknamed the Bumblebee. And being bright yellow I can very much see why. You will however need your very own power armor chassis for this on top of a bunch of junk but I will touch on the materials later so don't forget your chassis. This is Ezreal Gaming so let's get stuck in. This adventure starts at the Garahan Mining Company, which is located in the deep, deep south of the Ash Heap, which is about as far as south as you can get on the map. Now, marked on the actual map itself, you can see the three giant mansions of the Mining Company families, and you can see the huge things, quite frankly, from miles away towering above the Ash Heap's mines presumably so that the mine owners could watch over their precious mines in person. While there are no prerequisites for the quest for the excavator power armor plans, you can't actually wear it until level 25. So the time before that would probably be better spent collecting the myriad of junk required to put the parts together. The springs, screws, gears and black titanium in particular are a fair nuisance. But I will be doing a junk mini series in the near future so keep an eye out for that one. Subscribe and you'll never miss a video. When you get close to the mining headquarters you will be given a waypoint encouraging you to discover the Garahan Mining's innovation. Investigating further will bring you to this sign which advertises the excavator power armor and a quick click starts us off on the quest Minor Miracles. Now it's important to keep in mind that there are enemies here. Anything from scorched mole miners or even super mutants. Case in point. Now for those of you taking a range build that lacks strength and are struggling a bit with your carry weight issues, the excavator armor provides a massive 100 pound bonus to your carry weight on top of the usual power armor strength increase, which as you can imagine is quite invaluable for any character build that's a little bit light on carry weight. Also, every 10 levels you can craft an upgraded set and the level 45 sports a half decent set of resistances. However, it is of course no Ulcerite or X01. That said, you see quite a few people using it to fight the Queen, so it still holds its own relatively well. Heading down the broken escalator and through the doors will take us inside the headquarters itself and get us a small step closer to a few less carry weight issues. Of course, once inside there are a small number of enemies to deal with, though nothing too difficult. Once they are dealt with, however, just follow the waypoint along to the computer terminal, where reading the memo, excavator queries will progress our quest. The other memos fill out some more backstory, so if Fallout lore is your jam, well worth reading up on. So with the lobby enemies dealt with, just follow the stairs down and hug the wall to your right. You will in no time run into the reception desk that has the memo on it that we are in fact after. Now if you are like me and you like to sneak around, this can be done without disturbing the enemies in the surrounding rooms, which can save a little time. Although, you know, it's fallout, we pretty well kill everything. Now, of course, the memo reads as follows. Attention all employees. Any queries regarding the excavator power armor project should be directed to Harold Frost in our research and development division. 
Do not attempt to answer any questions directed to you by clients or press, which of course gives us our next quest update and our next destination, the Research and Development Division. But before we head down to R&D, we're going to take a quick detour into the manager's office. But why are we wasting time, as I hear you all ask? Well, for one, behind the desk on the little shelf, we can find the Civic Center booth access keys. And here's the big one. On the desk itself is the Garahan Estate Access Key Card. Now, remember those mansions out in front? Well, this key card lets us into the Garahan family estate and some pretty sweet looting. So, back to the task at hand. Head back to the reception desk and again hug the right hand wall as you cross the foyer. Head through the door, deal with the enemies in the control room because we really, really don't want any surprises while we're building our power armor. Now, if you have a bit of a look, in the background there, you can in the control room, you can see a map. Now, clicking on these pins will reveal any of the corresponding undiscovered locations. These maps, of course, can be quite handy at times, so keep an eye out for them. They can be found in places like Ranger Lookout Towers, the Enclave Bunker, and, of course, train stations. I almost feel sorry for this guy. Clearly, he got caught with his pants down. But, I digress. Now, keeping the toilets to your right-hand side, follow the corridor dealing with any enemies that you happen to bump into on the way, hang a right down the stairs, and pretty much that brings us to the R&D department. There is a reasonable amount of junk to be looted here, and there can be power armor, some plans, there's even a safe here, though keep in mind it does have a trap on it. However, Keep in mind that thanks to Bumblebee being acquired here, this place is often completely looted. So come prepared with all the parts that you need and a spare chassis. It does seem as though there is a static plan for the Tinker's workbench down here. Though, to be perfectly honest, I'm no clue why, as it's unlocked super early in the main quest line, making it entirely redundant. That said, there's also another static one that you can find in the overseer's old house in the basement. So, I'm not quite sure what the devs were thinking here. If you can unlock it at level 4, what's really the point of then finding it somewhere else? They could have better used the slot to, I don't know, maybe drop another power armor mod. Keep in mind also that any enemies that you missed on your way here seem to show up after you aggro an enemy in this room, which is why it's really important to clear as we go so we have a safe place to work. Also, if you keep an eye on the desk behind the terminal that we need to access to get the plans, there's also a random power armor plan there, so keep an eye out for that one. Once you're done clearing the room, and of course not forgetting getting your loot on, we need to download the plans for the excavator armour itself, which is our next step in the journey. Now, the terminal's pretty much smack dab in the middle of the room. You, you can't miss it. You really can't. The big yellow diamond on it also, that's a fairly big giveaway. Of course, for anybody that was curious, the location of the power armor plan that I mentioned earlier, right behind the terminal, so don't miss that one. To download the plans, it's as simple as selecting the excavator module blueprints option from the terminal. Of course, as usual, there's some story in the form of some personal logs from the R&D team through their development stages. Also, the excavator armor registration points us to our quest completion goal, as its reasoning being the helmet requires calibration through interface with the Garahan mainframe. And now onto the fun part, building Bumblebee. To get started, we need to have a chassis deployed within range for power armor station. 
any chassis will do though I recommend an empty one unless you like the idea of carrying all your spare power armor parts around which can get quite heavy whereas of course a fully loaded chassis will always only weigh 10 pounds also you can use any power armor station to build this however you will have to come back to this room to register so if you have all the parts ready before you come here you'll be able to do it all in one hit rather than running away and coming back to register later. The parts to build the Bumblebee are quite extensive. Seriously, you might actually want to sit down while I go through the list. The screws and springs and things, yeah, they're going to take a little while to build up. I will, however, just go through the level 25 requirements, but keep in mind that the level 35 and 45 variants the material requirements are actually slightly higher. The helmet requires 6 black titanium, 12 glass, 13 rubber, 10 screws and 17 steel. The left and right arms each require 6 black titanium, 10 gears, 9 oil, 10 screws and 17 steel. The legs each require 6 black titanium, 9 oil, 30 springs, 17 steel. The torso, 6 black titanium, 10 gears, 6 nuclear material, 13 rubber, 10 screws, 17 steels, bringing us to a grand total of 36 black titanium, 12 glass, 26 rubber, 60 screws, 60 springs, 38 oil, 30 gears and 6 nuclear materials. I did say sit down, right? Once we're done emptying out our stash of all its junk, um, okay, I mean building Bumblebee, it's time to register. Completing the quest will also give us the power armor plans for free, which is a nice thousand cap saving in itself for not having to buy the extremely overpriced plans. Now to register is as simple as coming over and clicking this button and all done. Now one thing to keep in mind is that when you register you, and I really shouldn't have to say this I'm sure, you need to be in the power armor. It, it's not going to work if you're not. Also, another thing that's a bonus is if you have both of the power armor arms equipped, instead of getting your usual one ore from these little veins here, you'll actually get four. So, definitely, just in itself, in being able to collect large amounts of ore in a short space of time, this armor will actually eventually pay for itself. And I'm pretty sure I just universally heard, as crew, how on earth are we going to collect that much junk? And, of course, what on earth's black titanium? Well, I got you covered. The hard things like springs, screws, and gears can be collected from places like Sugar Grove, which comes in at one run for about 14 gears, 18 screws, and 40 springs. The National Isolated Radio Array, 14 gears, 21 screws, 9 springs, or the National Astronomy Research Center, which comes in at a pretty respectable 29 gears, 29 screws, and 23 springs. They're all in close proximity and should be soloable at around 25. Now, those of you that don't know, you can actually go into your junk menu, flip it to component view, and actually tag things for search. So anything that you come across in the world that contains the things you tag, it will in fact highlight them for you. No end of useful. The main items that you're looking for, of course, are globes, typewriters, clipboards, clocks, hot plates, and toy cars. They've got the majority of what you're looking for. Black titanium, on the other hand, we have a few different options. We can use an extractor at the Gorge Junkyard here, which is not far from Fallout 76. The bonus, of course, also being that there is a junk extractor here which will spit out rubber, springs, screws, etc. every hour. 
the downside is of course if you crash and you can't get back to the same server you kind of lose your progress so that makes this option a little less appealing unfortunately but all the same it's not a lot of work involved for those of you of course that aren't faint of heart our next option is death claws for black titanium not only that they do in fact drop gears now the particular one that we are here seems to level cap at 21 and can be found at Deathclaw Island so as as long as you're game enough to take on a Deathclaw it's a relatively efficient way of getting both gears and titanium scrap finally last but definitely not least we have heading somewhere like Welsh which is in the ash heaps southern region to kill mole miners these guys will drop parts of their suit that when scrap will give black titanium as well as gears rubber aluminium and that sort of thing so all in all they're definitely not a bad option plus if you like shotguns they drop lots of shotguns now also they spawn in places like mines or factories so picking over any of the locations that they happen to spawn in like this one for example which is in Welch will also yield you some more screws, springs and gears so don't think that you're wholly and solely relying on whatever these guys drop if you're uh, good at scavenging you'll pick them up in no time flat that about wraps it up for the excavator armor it really is a solid mid game option especially for those builds that are a little low on strength i find my sniper well he pretty much lives in his set being as there is pretty well a huge requirement when it comes to crafting any of the power armors or just weapons for scrapping for modding and things like that i will be doing a mini series on junk and what locations are good for collecting different kinds of junk detailed right down to the numbers that i can come from a complete pick so keep an eye out for that one now of course if you found the video helpful don't forget to like and subscribe or even if you liked it enough share my channel with friends it really does help get me out there my name's Azkriel thanks for watching as always and I will see you all next time